Okay, so welcome back ladies and gents. We're going to be looking at section 5 now, um, qual which is basically all about the quality of information and its impact on the decision-making process and how it uh, can uh, affect it, basically. Um, everything you need is on page 80 and 81. And what you need to do is basically provide a paragraph on each of these bullet points here. So I've put them as questions, but they are uh, described in much more detail uh, on page 80 and 81. So let's have a look through uh, each section. Um, so why is quality important? To make good decisions both in business and in life, people need quality information. How do we define how we define quality of information is determined by a number of factors such as how and when uh, it was collected and who collected it as we mentioned in the previous section. So the first thing we need to look at is the source uh, and the collection method used to obtain the data. So where did it come from? There are several several ways a survey can be presented. For example, in person, over the phone, or via an online form. If secondary data is collected, um, if secondary data collection methods are used, there needs to be confidence that the data that has been collected by the third party is correct and accurate. Third party meaning by someone else. Um, that's why it's second hand information, second hand data, second data. If it was you who did it yourself, then that would be known as primary. Primary data is collection used, uh, sorry, if primary data collection is used, uh, then methods need to be chosen that ensure the results are correct. Whichever method is used to complete the survey, it should be noted that people may not always give honest answers. So whether you get it yourself or whether you get someone else to do it, so primary or secondary, there's still a chance that someone might be dishonest for whatever reason. Yeah, if you think about it, um, if you've ever been to town and someone, uh, you, you may have been approached by someone asking for you to answer some questions uh, of, and some people just walk away. Some people may stand, stand and start off by answering uh, the questions honestly and others might feel like as if, okay, this is taking too long. So they give any answer they can just to cut the, the survey short. And there are other reasons why people might be dishonest. Maybe they're embarrassed to certainly say certain things. Maybe they're filling in a form um, where they're not, um, you know, they don't have privacy, so they feel like they have to say something um, rather than being, you know, 100% accurate. And, and there's a whole list of reasons why someone may not give the full truth or the full picture. This is especially the case if the survey is completed in person rather than completing a form, or if the person completing the survey is required to give their name. The type of questions may also influence the, honest, uh, the honesty of the answers. For example, people generally under-report calorie uh, and alcohol intake and over-report the, um, over the amount of exercise taken. Yeah, so in general, most people don't like to admit that they take, they're having too much calorie in their diets or they are taking too much alcohol and generally speaking most people will like to say they're doing more exercise than they actually are um, so that's the method of collection yeah in person versus uh, say online um, then there's other things as well for example I'll, I'll give you a different example if you were to apply for a job most people will obviously want to make themselves look better than they actually are. I mean, it's, that's the whole point, because if you don't look as good as you can possibly look, then there's a chance that, you know, they, that you don't seem um, as attractive uh, as a proposition, and therefore you don't even get the phone call for an interview. So, in general, people will oversell themselves. Um, some people even go as far as to lie about themselves. So, that's another thing as well. So, let's look at the next point, the accuracy of the data collected. The accuracy of data will often depend on the methods of collection. Primary methods that use electronic techniques can often be accurate. For example, when your shopping is scanned at the supermarket, the scanner reads the barcode on each product and looks up the item on the database of products. Therefore, the list of items that are purchased is usually 100% accurate. Another example is the accelerometer in fitness watches and smartphones that count steps with reasonable degree of accuracy and allows activity uh, such as walking and running to be recorded, trends identified and comparisons made with other fitness enthusiasts. When people enter data, the opportunity for error increases. Yeah, so th that's a comparison there. So you entering it in manually versus a computer or a sensor doing it for you. This is one reason why validation and verification methods are used, but they cannot prevent all input errors. 
Now, if you don't remember what the validation and verification methods are, please refer back to the previous section uh, where we talked about and what you should have discussed uh, in yourself. So the accuracy is again linked to how truthful, honest can uh, so the the data uh, collected or inputted can be, and what uh, scenarios those individuals might be in. As I said sensors if you use sensors they tend to be more accurate than let's just say if you ask someone else to type it in for you uh, there's more chances of mistakes taking place and more chances of people being biased uh, and using favorable uh, information data um, depending on the kind of question that's being asked now the age of data is it important to know the age of data in other words how long ago it was originally collected many aspects of business and life can change very quickly and so data collected several years ago might not accurately reflect the current situation for example if you research rapidly changing areas such as the internet or mobile phone usage you need to use the very latest data as data collected just a few years ago will no longer be accurate as i said early on in a previous video you know, patterns change, trends change, hobbies and interests and what people like and dislike always change. Think about fashion as an example. What is um, popular now may have not been popular a few months ago and may change in a few months from, from now. Um, so the age, depending on what it is that you are looking for, what kind of answers you're looking for, um, the you know, when you collect that data can be crucial to making sure that you have the right information afterwards. The next section, we're going to look at how complete the data obtained is. Completeness is about having all the data needed to make a decision. For example, if you have a job interview on a particular date and time, but you don't know how long it takes to get to the location, then you don't have all the information you need to decide what time to leave home. When using secondary sources, you may find a data source that relates to the area you are interested in, but has aspects of the data missing. So for the application you have in mind, it's incomplete. Another possibility is that you design a survey to collect data from people, but when you analyze the results, you realize that there are questions that you fail to include in the design of the survey itself. So completeness is basically, have you asked all the right questions and have people actually answered all those questions? Have you forgotten something? Have they forgotten something? If you have 20 questions and people have only, the people that you've surveyed have only a answered 10, 15, or even a small portion that have missed two or three out, it means you, you know, you've not got the full picture. You know, there must be a reason why you've asked for every single question. Now, if you say no, but that not all questions are important, but then then the question must be, why did you have those questions in the first place? So there's a whole process involved of thinking about what questions you want to ask, getting them down, uh, so that when you go and ask those questions through online means or through emails or through interviews, um, then you get everything you need. Because you have to understand, most people are busy. We hate spending time on things that we don't feel are appropriate or aren't useful to us. And filling in forms and doing interviews are... You know, one of the least you know uh, things that you'll have on in your list of priorities. Most people uh, turn away from people who are asking them to fill in a survey or a question questionnaire in town for that exact reason. Because we're always busy. We want to get things done quick. We want things now. We want to move on. Um, so when we do ask questions, we want to make sure it is absolutely necessary. Because if you do manage to get hold of someone and who, you know, someone who's willing to give you that time to answer those those questions, then you want to make sure that you don't know you don't put them off. Uh, by asking questions that are unnecessary. And the reason for that is because, think about it, if you have 20 questions and each one of them takes a few minutes, then you're, you're asking for quite a lot of time from them. So the, the shorter you make it, the more likely you'll have a, a better response from people. So again, going back to the point, if there are questions that aren't answered, questions that you have gone through a, a, you know, a very um, a thorough process of you know making sure you have everything that you need on there, then of course you don't have the full picture. The next point, the amount of data obtained. Detailed data provides individual uh, facts about something. For example, detailed sales data would have figures for individual sales rather than just totals uh, by region, salesperson or day. Um, the amount of detail in the data needs to be appropriate for the application that uses it. If the data is too detailed, it will be, dif it will be difficult to spot trends. 
The data may need to be summarized or presented in different formats, for example, a graph to make, it meaning, make the meaning clearer. Alternatively, if the data lacks detail, you may not be able to use it for its intended purpose. For example, if a large retailer was considering which of its many stores throughout the UK needed further developments and which might be closed, then data about the sales made in recent years for each region of the UK would not have sufficient detail as the retail would, re retailer would need sales figures from the individual stores. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. So, to put simply, imagine if... For whatever reason, Morrison wasn't doing so well, yeah. And Morrison was thinking, Morrison's was thinking, well, okay, for us to survive, we need to close some shops down, some branches down, and others might need a bit more help, support, development, uh, refurbishment, whatever. Um, now they can't just decide which ones to close and which ones to give more funding by looking at data that's just to do with region, because in one region you could have fifty branches, and in another region you could have just two. So that's the point. The data must be linked to and must be relevant to what you're asking. So in this case, because we're talking about branches, then therefore the amount of data should be linked to the exact individual branches, the individual stores, uh, because that's what you're talking about. Okay. Next point, the format or presentation of the data. The data can be formatted in various ways, as we mentioned in previous videos, such as tables or graphs. If the data is poorly formatted or presented, then it may take, make, sorry, make it harder to interpret and to make decisions using the data. For example, lots of numbers presented in a table can be hard to make sense of, but may be much clearer as a chart. Yeah, so as I mentioned, you know, the whole process, this whole component, component two is about you working towards creating a dashboard, which is basically a one page summary that will be uh, made up of graphs, charts, line charts, um, and other tables from just a list of, in, you know, details that you, you, you know, so a list of data that you may have um, to make it easier for people to look at, to spot uh, uh, um, trends and patterns, and then come up with, uh, uh, you know, solutions or, 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 or make a decision for that business. If it's easy, if it's hard to read and understand one way, then it must be presented in another way. And as I said early on, generally speaking, data can be turned into useful information if we use visual formats, i.e. charts and graphs. Okay, so this is what you're basically trying to summarize in this section here. And the last part, the volume. The amount of data collect collected can have a major impact on the results. If you just ask four people what their favorite computer game is, you are not likely to get an accurate idea of the most popular games across the UK. However, if you ask 400 people, you might get a more accurate picture. The more people you ask, the more accurate the results are likely to be, which makes sense. This also, apl also applies to secondary data collection. For example, if you wanted to look at the effect of global warming in the UK climate, and you took temperature uh, data from the Met Office, which is basically the government uh, organization that collects weather data and makes forecasts, um, and you use that data from the Met Office for two locations in the UK over three months, you would not get a very accurate idea of the overall UK climate. You would need to sample many more locations over many years to get a reasonable, accurate picture. So, I hope that makes sense. To put simply, you know, let's just say, for example, if you look at your class, yeah, regardless of who you are, whether you're in my class or a different school, Generally speaking, we you know you, you typically have between fifteen and thirty students, and you wanted to find out what the most popular game is in the UK. Is it really suitable and fair um, to use those thirty individuals in your class to do a survey to find out what's the most popular game in the UK? Let's actually let's let, let's cut that. Let's let's say in the city that you're from, say Manchester. The answer is no, of course not, because you're asking about uh, making a decision. Uh, and coming to a conclusion about an area that could span hundreds and thousands of people, or if it's a whole country, millions, but and I'm basing a judgment from just 30 people. That sample size is far too small. You need a larger sample size to get uh, a, the right amount of volume to get data that's going to be suitable for the question that you're asking. Now, if I was saying, what's the most popular game in my class? Fair enough, then asking everyone in my class 30 students will be suitable 
Yeah. It's that's the question. I'm talking about the class. But if I'm talking about my local uh, area or my city or the country, then of course I need to, you know, go further, make sure it's a broader uh, sample, and it you know, it includes different kinds of people as well. So it's about the the numbers, the volume, hence the name. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. You know, this is a breakdown of the things that people need to consider. When I say people, I mean businesses, companies. If you don't consider all these items, the source, the accuracy of the data collected, the age, the completeness, the amount of data, the format, and the volume, these things determine um, the quality and how the decision is made, whether it will be a, a decent, good um and sensible decision or a poor decision yeah so that's what this whole section is about looking at the quality and the impact it has on decisions so this here all this which should be separate paragraphs with examples as I've discussed must be uh, you, ex you you must explain each of these things and how each of these things will either determine how good or bad the quality of that data is and then subsequently the information. And the better the quality, the better the decision. The poorer the quality, the poorer the decision. Hope that makes sense.